Okay, so now on to the PowerPoint that goes along with your chapter. I felt like you needed a little bit of an introduction to get you from DNA and an understanding of what your chromosomes are to the actual cell division. So that was the point of that other um, presentation. So chapter 5, cell division, and we're only going to do 5.1 to 5.4, which just talks about mitosis. Okay, so cell increase and decrease is the section heading, and it says the cell number increases from one in a zygote to trillions in, adult, in an adult, and it does this through a process called mitosis. But do cells ever decrease in number? And the question, answer to that question is yes, apoptosis, which if you watched that video, you saw a cell destroy itself. So it's programmed cell death, apoptosis and it's a decrease in number of cells. It also has some um, uses in organisms. For example, um, we would have webbed fingers and toes because the tissue between our fingers would never disappear if we didn't have apoptosis, and the tail of a tadpole would never disappear if we didn't have apoptosis. And um, also, uh, the cell has its uh, ability to censor itself, so whenever it sees it begin to lose control in the cell cycle, it can do apoptosis to prevent cancer. But we'll talk about cancer in a little bit specifically, and it does some um, things to mess with the mechanisms which govern apoptosis. So what does apoptosis look like? Um, normal cells have uh, look irregular and they have a clear nucleus, but not all body cells look like this. Each will have a characteristic appearance like the cheek cell and an adipose fat cell, and when you see them under a microscope, then you'll know that's what they are. And as soon as apoptosis begins, the cell will change its appearance. And there's a question that says um, exactly what occurs during apoptosis, and this sums it up a little bit. It, they separate themselves from the other cells in the area. Um, there's a change in the appearance. The uh, chromosomes and kind of round up and disintegrate the nucleus, and the edges will appear to boil, and then the cell will just kind of look like it pops and then uh, the debris cleaned up and the cells no longer existing. And here's a picture of it from your textbook. You can see normal cells and then the cell rounds up and the nucleus collapses. The chromatin condenses and fragments. Um, the blisters or blebs or bubbles form and the, the cell actually fragments and just totally falls apart. Um, there's an enzyme that's responsible and it's the one that helps to digest the cell from the inside whenever uh, apoptosis is required. Okay, so we already kind of talked about the cell cycle and here's the definition for a cell cycle. It's just the orderly set of stages that occur between the time a cell divides and the time the resulting daughter cells divide. And cell cycle includes all of interphase, which is G1, S, G2, and mitosis and cytokinesis. That's the entire cell cycle. Um, oh, here we go. So interphase has G1, which is growth after mitosis. The S phase is a replication of the DNA. That's where you have that single chromatid that makes two sister chromatids. And G2 then has further preparation for cell division. You understand that whenever I ask you where your hereditary material is, it's in the DNA, which is in the chromosomes inside of the nucleus. Um, the mitotic stage is both mito mitosis and cytokinesis combined. And so mitosis and cytokinesis, you had a question last night, what's the difference between those? Mitosis is a division of the nuclear contents and cytokinesis is a division of the cytoplasm. Here's the picture from your book. You can see it has prophase and late prophase um, in there and then it has metaphase, anaphase, tel telophase, and then cytokinesis. And so this light baby blue part, this is all the mitotic phase or the, my, um, the M phase is what they refer to it as sometimes. And then this purple is all interphase, which is 90% of the cell's life. And what occurs is growth, replication, and more growth. And you can see two daughter cells come out of the cell cycle, and then it can enter right back in, and it will undergo mitosis also. 
Um, there are three checkpoints in the cell cycle and G1 basically at that checkpoint it just checks the DNA. Is it in good shape? Is there enough material there? Um, G2 did it get copied or replicated correctly whenever it made um, a copy of itself in uh, S phase. Uh, in the M phase are the chromosomes aligned correctly? If they're not then um, it's uh, gonna actually halt the cell cycle. Uh, cyclins, which are just proteins, increase and decrease as the cell cycle continues and you need the appropriate number of cyclins to proceed to the next stage. Um, the, there's some information about the guy won Nobel Prize for this in 2001. So this is all relatively new information. They're still determining information about the cell cycle and what goes on and uh, which is kind of exciting because this is new since I was um, in college. Um, here are uh, the checkpoints in kind of a graph form. You can see it G1 happens right after the G1 growth phase and uh, apoptosis will occur if DNA is damaged and cannot be repaired and otherwise the cell goes on into the next phase. At G2 mitosis uh, will occur if DNA has replicated properly and apoptosis will occur if DNA is damaged and cannot be repaired and then at the M checkpoint it just makes sure that the uh, chromosomes are aligned properly and it happens at metaphase so if they're not lined up in the center appropriately then apoptosis will occur. So the checkpoints are critical for preventing cancer development and it says that a damaged cell should not complete mitosis but instead should undergo apoptosis and whether it does or not determines whether or not you get cancer. Carcinogenesis is just the development of cancer. It's a multi-stage process and it's basically a disruption in cell division and there are some mutations that occur in certain genes that um, initiate cancer, the proto-oncogenes and the tumor suppressor genes. And these next two slides go into detail about them. So the proto-oncogenes, and onco means cancer, you go to an oncologist if you have cancer. So anytime you see that, you know they're referring to cancer. Um, encode proteins that promote the cell cycle and prevent apoptosis. So you could kind of call them the gas pedal of the car and it helps it to continue through the cell cycle. If a mutation occurs, then the gas pedals press down. It looks like that video that we saw in the first one where the cell cycle ran amok out of control and developed a tumor. So if there's a um, error or a mutation in the proto-oncogenes, then this can actually accelerate the cell cycle instead of uh, its normal behavior. If there's a mutation in the tumor suppressor genes, um, this is kind of like the brakes of the car and it usually inhibits the progression through the cell cycle and instead of putting on the brakes, then it is not functioning and there are no brakes, so the gene products um, don't inhibit the cell like they should and then therefore they can go uh, and divide out of control and that's uh, one of the causes of cancer. So maintaining the chromosome number. Euka eukaryotic chromosomes are composed of chromatin and which is just the um, uncoiled um, uncondensed form of your um, chromosomes and they call it chromatin and the two parts that make up the chromatin are DNA and protein and they're dispersed in non-dividing cell and you can't see them with a microscope. Um, they condense f into a compact form for cell division. So once they enter into the M phase that's whenever you're able to see the chromosomes and in interphase it's referred to as chromatin. And you need to understand this is eukaryotic chromosomes only. This isn't prokaryote so this doesn't have anything to do with bacteria. This is all the other kingdoms of life. So the plant, the animal, the fungi, protist, all of those um, organisms have basic chromosome like this. Okay, um, each species has a characteristic chromosome number, so you can uh, look at a species and know that characteristic number for that organism. For example, Norman hum normal humans have 23 pair or 46 chromosomes. There's the bell, sorry. Diploid, which is 
um, represented by a 2N have two pair of each of the chromosomes. So human body cells have 46 or 23 pair. That's their diploid number. And haploid, they have the one there, but a lot of times they'll just write in. And so uh, this is half the chromosomes. So human egg and sperm have 23 or one member from each pair. Uh, the uh, mitosis, just to refer to some of the words that kind of already gone into, but I'm going to go ahead and show you with the pictures from your book. Um, just know that in mitosis, the chromosome number stays constant, and it, if it was 2N in the cell, then it becomes 2N in the cells that are produced. The DNA replication produces duplicated chromosomes. So it's like here is the chromosome when it enters into uh, the S phase and this is what the chromosome looks like when it comes out of the S phase. So it's prepared to have its chromosome split right here at the centromere. And also remember these are the homologous chromosomes and these are the homologous chromosomes too. They could refer to them that way. They're just not duplicated. Um, these are the sister chromatids and then this is a chromatid. Okay, so these are just two chromosomes that have the same information on it. They're the same shape and size, and they have the same genes at the same location. And for humans, they know every chromosome and every gene on every chromosome and what it codes for, which is called the human genome, when you talk about collectively all the chromosomes for an organism. So sister chromatids, chromatids are um, genetically identical. They're held together by the centromere. If you're confused of how many chromosomes there are, you can count the centromeres. So notice there are two chromosomes here, two centromeres. There are two centromeres, so there are two chromosomes here. During mitosis, the centromere divides and each chromatid becomes a daughter chromosome. Here is another picture just to so, show a chromosome consisting of one chromatid. This is what it looks like um, before replication of occurs in the S phase. Notice here's the centromere now. It has sister chromatids. And then once it divides in mitosis, it goes back to this stage right here. So don't let those words fool you. Just remember chromosome, chromosome and chromatid are basically referring to this structure right here. Sister chromatids are referring to both of the, the halves of a duplicated chromosome, and the center is the centromere. I'm going to go ahead and stop and actually no, I'm not because we just have a few more slides and I've kind of blazed through this um, slideshow. Okay, so here is a cell. You can see that the chromosomes are inside of the nucleus and it has four chromosomes. That's the diploid number, so 2n equals 4. So haploid would be 2 times what number equals 4, so 2 or half of 4. Here are the little centrioles and remember as a pair they're called the centrosome and don't confuse that with the centromere and the centrioles are going to be what migrate to opposite ends of the nucleus and attach the spindle fibers to the chromosomes to help pull them apart. The centriole will create fibers to attach the chromosome to pull them to the poles of the cell and the chromosomes are composed of the DNA or the instruction book for the cell process. It basically looks like this. This is like the chromatid goes through interphase, S phase, and um, they're duplicated and now they're sister chromatids. Still only has one, two, three, four centromeres, so there's still only four chromosomes. Down here, this is whenever they're pulled apart into two new cells. Notice that it still has one, two, three, four chromosomes. It still has a whole number, it's just the sister chromatid is now on its own. So PMATI is what they refer to as a prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, interphase. And I've kind of already gone through this in the other um, PowerPoint. You can see interphase, there's no chromosomes visible. Prophase, the chromosomes start to condense. The nuclear envelope breaks down. 
metaphase, chromosomes line up in the center. Um, metaphase still lined up at 